So we're on the last page of this. This is the diagram that we uh, I hand out to you. Anyone else? I've got extra paper copies. Who else wants a paper? Oh, that ain't you. Thanks. Any, anyone else? Uh, the, the doubles want an extra copy? Because otherwise it's just paper that I want. So we define everything for the kids. You know, I think on there you have SO. I know it starts out with capital F, which would be the focal point. Lowercase f, which is the focal length. What's next on there? Uh, yeah, C, which is uh, 2F, right? Or And where 2F comes from is the center of curvature. So if you drew that concave mirror as a full circle, C would be 2F, which is the center of this um, circle. SO is the object distance measured from the focal length, sorry, from the focal point. And SI, there we go, is measured from the focal point as well. HO is the height of the object, or the lady of the night. And HI <laughs> is the height of the image. <laughs> All right. Go for it. Ready? And then we, uh, we tell the students we have to make a flat mirror approximation that uh, this is approximately flat fit. So we get uh, HO as well. And through similar triangles, which I can't see right now, I like oh, yeah. this guy right there, yep. and that guy right there. So we've got similar triangles that I'm going to shade. And then I should have another pair of similar triangles. So that would be, uh, how about this guy? I'm going to put little dots here. So we don't confuse our, uh, and you can tell the alternate interior angles. So that height right there should also be changed to high. And so they're roughly triangles, even though the mirror is curved, it's the flat mirror approximation. They've uh, come up with a lab that SO, SI is equal to S squared, so they should do the same thing geometrically. And so let's use our uh, dash triangles. It could be like this. And I've got, uh, what do I have down here? HI, HO. This length here is F, and then this length here I see is SI. And uh, I'm just going to use the ratios from some of the triangles. Idaho is equal to SI to F. So we've got high hope silver fast. It's a nice way to look at uh, this is the magnification, one way to look at it, which I over H O, the height of the image versus the height of the object. That's the way I think the books will teach it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's kind of odd. I mean it, it's kind of intuitive if I'm taking the ratio of the image height to the object height. If we look at the other uh, triangle here. The other way, looking like this way. And that's the dotted one. So, this base of this would be SO. And here, this base would be the full point again. So I'm going to do I'm going to do the same ratio here. HI HO is equal to the F over SO, so high O fatso. We've got high O silver fast, high O fatso. And wouldn't that mean that uh, SI over F would also have to equal F over SO? Sorry for the, the chalk is a little light. Mm -hmm. Which when we uh, simplify that, we get SI, SO is equal to S squared. So the same thing that they got from their lab. Mm -hmm. So you're probably wondering why you painted all these dollar rods. Well, as a, um, as a review activity, um, what we'll do is we'll um, We'll draw a curved mirror, you know, we'll post it on the, on the demo table here, and then we'll put a mark, an, F, a two, an F and a 2F, so we'll, you know, break up all the zones. That'll be the mirror, right? So that's the mirror. And then, uh, put F, 2F, and it's uh, obviously concave, because here's zones 
Oh, even better. Now that's yeah, now you can see it for real. Now we'll use paper and we won't top of the marker in our mouth. <laughs> but uh, there, that's not Steve for the center curvature, but that's the mirror. Ah, here we go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so then what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll place this rod somewhere. So this is my object one, one of the um, equal size ones. So I'll place it here. And I'll say, okay, who can place the image in the right location? So you've got your three sizes. You've got your you know, larger, same size, and smaller. And then, since you painted them two-tone, you can put them right side up or upside down. So here, we're in zone two, right? So our object would be located in zone one. No, the image. Sorry, the image would be in zone one, right? It'd be larger, and it'd be upside down. And obviously, you know, I did that because I've been teaching this for a long time, but for a kid, that is very difficult. You know, and then you'll, you know, I'll usually have the class be quiet, and they'll make their choice, and then, you know, we'll go, we'll cheer, or we'll, you know, put thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever. And, uh, you know, if he gets it wrong, someone else will come up and try to modify it. And, um, but it's, um, it's very nice because they can, you know, they actually get to mess around with it and play with it. You know, you can get the tougher ones, you can put the object at 2F. Know. So then the image has to be at 2 up. And if you want, you know, more like the ray dagger, and you can have it underneath the table too. Um, but uh, you know, it's just it's, it's a really easy way to solidify and a nice review activity for them to hey, get out of their desk and be, um, you know, actually try it. We uh, didn't write this down, but uh, we've got an old school one. But this is the parabolic microphone. Okay. And uh, they make them like this in football games now with the handles because the holster would just break all the time. So they don't make it gun style anymore. But again, the, uh, the microphone right at the focal point there. And uh, really, actually, this one I think is really parabolic and not. Mm -hmm. not I think spherical. now they're making it more circular. In fact, more spherical. The guy who, thank you, the guy who we got one of our demos from that we're going to talk about later, he actually makes it. And he blows air into a piece of acrylic. Uh, and it just blows up in a nice um, hemisphere. Yeah. So he makes it for. And if you look at the scrolling at the end of the football game, they call it a parabolic dish engineer. Really? Wow. That's the guy that does this, and then oh no, and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to be. Now uh, they also sell uh, eco-friendly uh, cigarette lighters. You know, save the world, not your body. <laughs> <laughs> right? But uh, it's the same idea. You, you just stick your cigarette in there, and uh, it's right at the focal point. Um, I think we bought these guys from a place called the Sundance Solar. Sundance Solar. Now uh, this is the Solar Spark Lighter and Survival Tool. Because when you get the jitters, <laughs> that's pure survival. He's got it ready to go. If you uh, go down to your parking lot, you can find these things. They're headlights. Yeah. yeah. And so there's a light bulb in a concave mirror, and it's at pretty much the focal point. Now this was uh, from my old truck, but I, you know, oops, hello. <laughs> it's almost parallel beam, isn't it? So when you put that light bulb at the focal yeah. point, you get a, a nice parallel beam. But and then this one's real nice, you know. Once we smashed it off, because uh, you can see that it truly is a concave mirror in there, and you, you can also see that this is only slightly you see the Mirage so toy uh, over on. Uh, how many people have this? The Mirage toy. How many people have done the bonus, dem bonus demo with this with the laser? No. Uh, so someone come up here who's got the toy and would like to see the bonus demo. You know, or maybe everyone can kind of come around. Yeah. 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 You can see the laser shine on the yep. plate. I mean, and even inside the eraser. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be there, but uh, I mean, that, that boggles the kids' minds when they see that you can shine a laser on this thing that's not there. If you're too far away, come on in and take a look. So this is just an extra, you know, you want to... You know, but again, this goes back to the first, like the second thing we taught you, that the light rays are reversible.